Hey guys, and today I am finally releasing my Particle Grapher V1.0. What this is, is a software that you can download that lets you turn 3D graphs or 2D graphs into particles or anything really. You can do it with Setblock in game uh, using local chords. Uh, so we're going to briefly go over how to use it, how to install it. Uh, I'll go over how to install it first and then do a couple tutorials on how to make things like what you see here. So in order to download this, you're going to need to grab the Particle Grapher V1.1 off the web. It has a couple bug fixes from 1.0, which is the one I distributed for testing. You're gonna need admin access to uh, download this because it downloads some libraries. So once you open it up, you'll see a splash screen. And after you give it a couple of seconds, it will eventually open up this page. So the page gives you my email and a quick description of what the program does. And you can hit next and it will let, ask you for a location. As long as you pick the same location uh, every time that there's an update, the update will just overwrite it and it will be way faster to download. Um, you can also add a shortcut to the desktop, which I already have here. Then you just click next and it might take a while to open up stuff, but uh, this is going to help you install the libraries. And uh, essentially it's going to search when you click next here, it's searching if you already have them. If you already have them, then the download is very fast. I think it's only 50 megabytes and like 50 of them are for the uninstall. Um, but yeah, so give it a second. If it ever comes up with an error, just try it again. It doesn't work. I don't think it works for Linux right now though. So uh, you need Windows 10 and I'm sure, I'm pretty sure it works for Mac, but I don't think I've had any Mac users test it yet. So let me know about that. So it found the MATLAB runtime and I can click install now and it will be a very quick install. Uh, it's really only two megabytes. All right, so all in all, if you download this, it's gonna be, uh, I think I already mentioned it, but it's gonna be 800 megabytes. And, uh, but most of those are for the library. So if any, if I make any more software and you download the other software, it will be way faster to install and take up less disk space. Um, it's just the first one that in includes MATLAB is going to be pretty heavy. So you double click on this and it'll come up with a splash screen. Sometimes the first time you open it, it can take a while to like actually pop up the program. Don't click it repetitively. You can check in your task manager. It is working on opening, but uh, sometimes it can take longer uh, for that initial load, even on my computer. All right, so the program is opened and uh, give it a second and it will resize to our screen. Hopefully the resolution is proper for everybody. Um, sometimes my icon can end up in weird places when you open it. Um, but it's it should fit approximately 80% of everybody's screen, regardless of screen resolution. And we're gonna go over how to use this real quickly. Um, so essentially there is only four tabs and uh, this is the help tab. It'll tell you how to do things if you click on it. So you have X, Y, Z, and there's a hidden variable T. T is controlled by the point slider and the distance slider. So we're gonna load up an example of a circle and when we click it and give it some time to load, it will give you the equations of a circle in parametric form. You can, you don't have to be a math genius. I have examples here that you can mess with and you can just plug in different variables and equations to see what it does. Um, but this gives you a circle and you can adjust the via the slider for its radius. So when you load this in game, it will go 10 blocks and negative 10 blocks and 10 blocks and negative 10 blocks. So that's it. Imagine the center is zero, zero, wherever you play the function, this is how big it will be. And then the distance, how far out in the direction you're looking is going to be one. Uh, it's going to be at zero, zero. <laughs> so let's load something that is actually 3D. So let's go with a circle, a cylinder. Um, I might change this in the before release, but uh, it loads up as a 30 uh, radius. So that's very big. Now we're going to tune it down a bit so you can see more of a cylinder. Okay, so it may look kind of chaotic, but that's just because of the view. So you can click and drag to rotate the image and see what it looks like from different angles. Um, so we have a negative four to four, so about eight diameter, uh, eight block diameter cylinder. And we also have it going forward from zero to 10 blocks. So we can go ahead and change this to uh, much shorter. And this goes from zero to four and it'll snap back to the original alignment. Um, now, if we wanna make it more detailed, we can increase the points, but I would not go 
I mean, a thousand I put as the max. I would not bother going anywhere near there because points just corresponds to how many commands it will take. So if I say 112, that is actually 112 commands, which is quite a bit. Now, you can always mess with the uh, omega, which is W, and that's the frequency of the cosine and sine to get some different looking shapes just because of how it magically aligns with how many points there are and how quickly the sinusoid is changing. So you can get some different interesting shapes using this. Uh, now, if we go to the cone, this one's one of my personal favorites. This makes a nice cone, but it takes about 300 commands uh, to make it look like this. Uh, the one I have showing in the beginning of the video is actually only 100 points. So you can tune the points down and you're going to see it looks kind of interesting. It's like tendrils and that's part of the kind of cool effects you can get. But if you want to get just a nice looking cone, uh, you can change the slider maximums here to something that makes more sense. So four and now it'll show you a zero to four scale. And if you go, so go somewhere around three, you'll get a nice little kind of springy spiral look. Now this is radius again, I don't wanna do a 50 block radius, so I'm gonna tune that down to about five. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind with cones, R is not the end radius, it's the radius at the very beginning, so this thing can balloon very quickly. If I set it to 1.5, it'll end up being a 20 by 20. So that's just math. And I can make this really small and it'll be a tight cone. Um, so yeah, you can mess with that. Uh, you can also input your own equations. Uh, t is a reserved variable, um, and I believe pi, if you type the word pi, it's like 3.14 or something of the sort. Um, but yeah, you can create your own, um, like so, a times b, and then this will give us an interesting thing and we can mess with it uh, and manipulate a and b. Every single time you type in a variable that the system doesn't know, it makes a slider for it. So I think in the release I'll have this, but right now E is undefined. I might redefine E as a specific thing, but if you wanted to do some kind of exponential, uh, it doesn't like this. It'll be fine. Ignore what I'm doing here with that. Um, but uh, 2.728 is the magic number and you can get kind of an exponential effect going on. You see the dots clustered here and they expand. Um, so yeah, so you can do, it has basic notation except for the fact that every variable needs a times between it. If you do three, you need three times t, not three t. So that's a very important thing to note. Um, now there's some other examples here that are really interesting. So there's triangle, which looks like a triangle. We also have cat, which looks like a cat, and bulldog, and perched owl. So all of these are made using a huge, fat, thick, big boy sinus, sine, cosine Fourier series expansion. You can input Fourier series expansions in here, but we don't have the cheats of the uh, weighted functions. Maybe eventually I'll make heavy side functions work. Um, if you don't know what that is, don't worry. Point is, if you combine enough sines and cosines, you can make any shape that you want, um, as long as your pencil doesn't pick up when you're drawing the shape. So we can go ahead and clear everything by just deleting and deleting and deleting. And we can explore the draw. The draw is kind of interesting. So this guy actually already has some stuff that I clicked on it. I'll clear all. So this one, you don't use these to manipulate it. You just use these values. So this is your canvas. You can change the canvas size. So let's make it a four by four. And this will go from zero to four and zero to four. Now I can draw like a smiley face. And this is where you can really do whatever you want. And uh, if I didn't like the last point, I can delete the last point or I can clear everything. So I can just draw it and it'll work exactly like the graph, except with my own points. And it's not the best drawing thing, but again, I'm not a computer scientist, so uh, this isn't my area of expertise. Anyways, so there's support. You can check out my YouTube and Discord. Um, then we also have these last bits, how to actually export it. So we're going to export a cylinder of radius five, and we're going to go to export. Now, when you first click export, it's going to pop up the uh, file explorer where you can type in the name of the file. So C1 is what I'll call it. And there'll be a loading. It, obviously things are slower because I'm recording. It actually is pretty fast. The progress bar is accurate <laughs> with how long it takes. And when we open it, it'll give you this nice function file that has exactly how many commands the points were, 303, uh, 302. So 
these are the commands in parametric uh, in the local coordinates form. So no matter where I look, it will make the same shape. Um, the cool thing is though, I mean, do you just want flame particles? Well, first let's import this and see what that looks like. Uh, let's go back to this. Let's import C1 and pull up our game. So if I pop into creative and break this. Now, if I go over here, I can just type it from here. Function reload function test C1. And that will make an interesting little cone around me. Uh, it looks kind of like a scope. That's just part of what happened when I messed with the uh, two var variables that I was tuning. And no matter where I look, it always makes that cone around where I'm looking or where the origin of the function is playing. Um, I also have some other ones that you can just quickly take a look at. So that's the double spiral. This is the uh, perched owl, just like that. And this is the uh, regular spiral at uh, the default example. So now there's one more thing that we need to play with here. I guess I can leave this open now. Um, and that is the settings. So there's a settings tab. When you click it, it may take a sec to load. All right, so this is how it exports. You have a pre command and a post command. So with particle, you have to do particle flame and then the coordinates and then the DX, the Y, DZ and the speed and the count. So that's just kind of the format. Um, if you want to change the particle, you can change this to end rod. And when you export it, it'll export as end rod particles. But you can do whatever you want here. You can do set block stone and it'll set the blocks to stone and all those points that you have there. Um, let's click cancel because <laughs> I don't want to save that setting. Uh, the settings won't save between sessions. So if you close the program, it won't save the settings. Now, one that you might have noticed is commands per frame. That one's kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and do end rod and let's make commands per frame two so oh, or three. So commands per frame basically allows you to animate kind of your 3D shapes. Um, keep it, Commands per frame doesn't work for uh, the draw tab, though, because uh, I just figured it didn't. It will be hard to make some kind of reasonable rule for it and it's not as important. So let's go ahead and do cone. Uh, let's change it down to about 100 commands. Uh, I like this tendrils anyway, so we're going to export this. Uh, it's four by four by eight. Oh, so I'm going to hit export. And we'll call this Annie cone. And it already exported. OK, so Annie cone is going to go in here. So once you decide to use an animation, you need to do scoreboard objectives add CW particles dummy. So you need to make a dummy scoreboard because CW particles, because if we look inside the actual command, we'll see what it does. So what it does is it makes it so it adds one to the player who plays its particle score. And then it plays three particles per value of that. So the amount of ticks it will, the amount of repetitions of this command it will take to play all of them is 26. Now, uh, these last two might be a bug and that's just because it didn't come out to some even value of three. So it'll just, um, I'll probably, I, I guess that's one bug that I'll have to look into uh, before post, but I'm recording because this is a good time to record anyways. Uh, so once you exceed the value, it resets the whole thing. So let's go ahead and go execute as at P positioned five run function test any cone reload. Okay, so now we're going to make it actually a repeat. There you go. So you're going to get a couple particles um, that just want to kind of always be there. Um, and I think that particle in particular has to do with um, like a bug, I'm not sure, but let's just focus on these guys. Uh, actually, I can delete these last two, right? Probably. Reload. Yeah, there, now they're gone. Uh, so you can always go in and mess with it yourself, but you can kind of see it pulsating. And uh, this animation is fairly smooth and I'm not getting much frame drops. And that's because, again, it's hard coded. So um, I think that's pretty nice. 
uh, the animation works pretty well and it moves fairly fast. You can adjust the speed based on how many commands per frame there are, because but then the animation won't look as smooth. But I think that looks pretty nice, uh, if you're asking me. Anyways, guys, with that, I'll leave you there. If you find any bugs or have any suggestions for additions, I'll take them into account. Maybe add, uh, make an update with a vid or just an update in my uh, Discord. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.